Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of Code and Capital, a new show from Benzinga exploring how emergent tech like AI is changing financial services. I'm your host, Ian Carr, and I'm excited today to be joined by John Nay, founder and CEO of Norm AI, a really interesting startup in the AI and finance space. Norm AI focuses on turning complex regulation into code using AI, making it easier for banks and financial institutions to follow policies without wasting a lot of time. But I'll let John tell you a little bit more. John, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so Norm... um... What we do is we turn regulations and um, firm policies as well into regulatory AI agents, which are systems that can automatically assess compliance for first pass review um, in, a, in a live workflow. So I think you started in 2023. I think this might be your second AI company. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you got started uh, in this space and how you sort of landed on Norm AI as an idea. Yeah, so I was the founding CEO of another AI company as well, and and that company is um, still going really well. But I moved into the chairman role there to to found Norm. And there's two main threads that brought me to Norm. So one is on the AI and law research side. So I've done about a decade of work um, in that space of looking at how machine learning systems and neural networks in particular can understand law and policy and, and legal standards. And then that paired with then the experience of my first company of, of building that company and in particular, the focus on it being an AI company that's, um, that had to do a, a large compliance practice, given that we have a wholly owned subsidiary there that's an SSC registered investment advisor. So that was just the practical experience about, um, about building on a compliance program and, and doing that um, in the right way, paired with that AI and law research those two things kind of came together for for Norm. And so at Norm, um, we're really at that inflection point in the broader world of large language models, being able to understand law and policy in a really real way now. And so that was the jumping off point to, to make the move to, to found Norm and you going with what we're doing here. So you sort of uh, felt the pain point yourself and decided to go and solve it, huh? Well, yeah, that and then also just the um, the ability for AI more broadly to just be at that inflection point uh, was so exciting and the opportunities um, of deploying that commercially were were so big that um, that was a, a key driver. So uh, obviously AI is a fairly fast changing uh, space. Did you, um, did the division change originally from what you guys were uh, originally planning or were you always sort of building it with this, you know, goal in mind? Well, from the very beginning, the goal has been around thinking about the long term or medium term, depending on how quickly AI moves of AI agents. And so what we mean by that are systems that can take more than one step at a time to accomplish an economically useful task without a human fully in the loop. Humans, of course, are going to supervise these systems, but um, but thinking about AI agents more broadly, not just what we do in regulatory AI, and in noting that um, if they're actually deployed in a real way, they're going to be subject to many laws and regulations, which are very well-meaning in terms of how to um, how to have lower externalities and just have things go better. And so that's um, and then thinking about how you could actually deploy. AI agents in needing to analyze their outputs and their proposed decisions uh, with respect to all the relevant laws and regulations. So that has been from the beginning um, a problem that we saw coming. Um, and so now what we've done to move towards that is we've gotten deployed in very high stakes and important um, workflows for doing regulatory compliance. And over time, more and more of that um, analysis that we're doing is coming from AI agents, not just from traditional human outputs. Um, and so that's that's how we're aligning that original long-term vision with where we see the world going as well. That makes sense. Um, would love to hear a little bit more about you know the mission itself of turning regulatory requirements into software is, is sounds great, but I think for the average person, I think it could be a little bit complex. If you can sort of uh, deciphered a little bit for, you know, the average uh, viewer and kind of go through like how a AI compliance agent works versus an actual human compliance agent and what the uh, issues the AI solves that a human has a lot of either time, spends a lot of time doing or a lot of difficulty 
uh, actually executed. Yeah. So in terms of um, how how it works, just to take a step back, that'll help to answer the question. So what we do is we turn regulations, whether it's um, a public policy or a firm or industry standard, we turn that into a decision process that represents a compliance process for determining whether or not you're in compliance with that given regulation. So we go one at a time and we build out in a very detailed way what that compliance process could look like. And so it, it many times it's very um, dependent on how the firm or the different um, client would like to interpret those regulations. And so we further align it to their interpretation and the way they would deploy it inside their enterprise. Um, and then in terms of bringing this down to specific examples, so there's many regulations that govern the type of content that can be shown directly to consumers by a business. And so that's an area where there's a big surface area of that content out there and the potential risk of that. Um, and what we do is we analyze the content pretty far upstream in the process of producing the content. And so what that enables business people to do is to get that feedback and enables compliance professionals to say, oh, we forgot to add a disclosure there, or we have a very subtle, nuanced um, way that we need to provide more details to the consumer about the product we're going to sell them. And so those types of overlays of improving the content through, from a regulatory and compliance and legal lens, um, that's a very practical example of how um, converting a regulation into AI code and then deploying it in these workflows where there's a high volume of things that need to be reviewed can add a lot of value. Okay, makes sense. I think that, so the human staying in the loop is pretty pretty critical to the overall process, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's at the, at the very least, the human is carefully supervising the process, um, but then the human has the ability to dig deeper into the details um, as needed and go all the way down into very um, interpretable explanations of exactly what's going on. Yeah, the explanations are is a good segue into like the trust and, and safety side of this too. Compliance is obviously really high stakes. How do you ensure that your outputs are both standardized? I think that's something that, that's been an issue with AI agents. The output is kind of very hard to make it repeatable. And then also, how do you sort of uh, foster trust within the process to make uh, your clients and, and customers feel like the AI agent is working and the results are accurate? So it's a really rigorous process to create the AI agents here. So we have um, internally certified lawyers in the process. They're certified in the process of creating regulatory AI agents. So most of the people that are doing this have worked at um, uh, some of the top law firms and they all have law degrees. They have JDs um, from, from law schools here. And what they do is every day, they're curating the regulatory AI agents, building new ones, supervising them, validating them. And so we have a process of creating them where you have to have at least one of these lawyers analyze the output in a system that was built just for them to analyze outputs. So we have a whole part of our software engineering organization that caters towards that, um, that capability. And so what this allows us to do is to have a team of in-house um, attorneys, they don't practice law anymore though. All they do is build and validate regulatory AI agents. So that process has enabled us to build the trust in it internally and then also um, uh, have clients have that same trust as well. That's fascinating because you hear a lot of fintech companies like integrating compliance uh, folks into their product development process, but integrating actual lawyers and making sure that the output is uh, approved by them and making sure that they're involved in the process probably makes a huge impact as well. Yeah. And even more than that, um, they literally build the product. So the domain experts are the ones that are are the, the builders of the product and, and then that gets deployed on the back end. So there's no loss in translation between a domain expert and the actual code and the product itself. Yeah, kind of cutting out the middle middle part of the engineering and the product and just letting them get straight to the, the nuts and bolts. It makes sense. Um, so on the it seems like you guys are broader than just financial services, but let's stay focused on that uh, sector. 
How are you working with financial services companies today? Maybe you can uh, talk about a couple that you guys have talked about publicly. Uh, and what are the most immediate sort of use cases that you've been helping banks and financial institutions solve? Yeah, so we, um, as an example, we work with a variety of chief compliance officers and chief legal officers um, at, at firms that are insurance companies, asset managers, yeah. private equity firms, and others. And, um, and we have a regulatory advisory board that has some of these individuals on them. Um, and these are places like New York Life um, and then also um, places like TIA. So they're large asset managers or insurance companies um, that we've added onto this regulatory advisory board. And that gives you a sense of, um, of how we build the product as well, because we get very high level input from people like that. And then that comes down to informing our regulatory roadmap and, um, and then the legal engineers who I mentioned earlier, what they do every day. Makes sense. Um, I mean, that kind of goes into the team and expertise. You mentioned you hired a lot of, uh, you know, ex uh, big law uh, lawyers. You recently added Troy Paradis uh, um, as a senior advisor. Like, how do you sort of approach that uh, that idea of getting legal expertise and you know ex regulators on board? And you know what what's like a sort of secret sauce that has been you've been able to unlock to get such great talent onto your team? Well, I think the scale of of what we're what we're doing. Um, the fact that we're building regulatory AI and, and we're sort of defining and and really building out that whole category. Uh, I think they're excited about it being a, a truly um, useful deployment of AI right now. There's a lot of talk about a lot of different AI use cases, but this is one where it's, a, it's immediately impactful and valuable to everyone involved. So whether it's business people, compliance people, um, or consumers that now have, have potentially um, the, the enterprises they're I interacting with and the content they're viewing is more compliant. Um, so it's one of those where it's, it's that mission oriented, uh, outcome that, that these people can not just join for joining a typical company, but be part of, uh, really defining what, what regulatory AI means now that we're in this inflection point of AI and what I makes sense i think something that i've been really curious about and i see kind of t popping up into like the compliance agent the compliance officer like subreddits that i follow uh is the idea of whether or not these ai agents are going to replace compliance officers or augment them i'd love to hear a little bit more about your general thoughts there and you know where you sort of see the industry right now versus like where it could be in like a couple of years yeah, so we, um, in terms of replacing, we we don't view it that way, and, and our clients don't either. The, the primary way that it's um, that the type of thing that we do is is deployed is to think about it being doing more. So getting things back to the business faster from a legal compliance review perspective, but not sacrificing on the quality of the review. Um, what that enables them to do is to say we're not necessarily going to have less people doing it, but we're going to generate more revenue and we're going to build the business faster um, and not sacrifice on, on regulatory compliance. So that's one angle um, that, that people come at us from. The other one is around uh, the deployment of AI broadly. So if AI is being used for generating proposed action and content that is subject to all these regulations, then they need a way to handle the review of that in a scalable manner. And today's status quo of manually reviewing that will work when you have AI so capable and so broadly deployed that there's just a huge volume of, of things that need to be reviewed. And so using us as a way to keep up with that and empower um, the humans to then supervise these AI agents that we deploy to get all that work done is a big part of, of what we're working on as well. So essentially increasing the productivity of the company while also making humans more efficient and kind of focusing on more complex cases and acting as managers for some of those more road tasks. Right, exactly. So, so a lot of the tasks, if they can act as, as managers of AI agents, then more of their time can be spent on the more nuanced um, tasks and the ones that are more around the politics of business, of how to navigate brand new situations and different stakeholders inside their firm. There are also a lot of advantages, right? Like, for instance, you know, these AI agents can work 24-7, where humans, obviously, having a 24-7 team is 
means having global global teams, which is really difficult for a lot of companies. Uh, I think there are some structural advantages to AI agents over humans as well, right? Yeah, that's a good point on the global aspect and 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 things that require a quick turnaround. Um, it, if you have different people in different parts of the world that are working on it, then that becomes very difficult. So enabling a first pass review to be conducted by AI is is really advantageous, especially if you can say, here's a risk-based approach of things that don't need a, a deeper dive and don't need more, um, then you can get first pass reviews done in a way like that. Awesome. And uh, you know we're running short on time here, so I'll, I'll leave you with one more question. It's a two-parter. What sort of advice would you have? Let's say I'm a bank uh, and working on an AI product and you know doing some vendor analysis and we're getting ready to actually deploy AI agents. What piece of advice would you have that every um, institution or every bank should be conscious of? And for a founder interested in the AI space that's getting started, what advice would you have on finding product market fit and getting early customers? <laughs> So on the first part, from a large institution that's deploying AI agents, um, a big part of it is if they're doing something like customer service um, or anywhere that is a high risk surface area, uh, they're going to need to think about how a human doing that same role or task would have been governed in terms of from the the regulatory perspective and and the compliance perspective. And then thinking about, well, then how am I going to do that in the world of it being an AI agent and being scaled at, at such a faster rate and across more, um, more potential risk area? So that's one thing. And that's, and that's a big part of you know, what we're working on is, well, how do you then sit across from that and be the regulatory AI infrastructure around that? And then on the second question, um, I mean, right now, there's just... We really are at an inflection point with AI where... It, new use cases that are being unlocked were right below a threshold of AI's capabilities. And then within two to three months, then we're finding that a new use case is unlocked right away. So the main advice on that is just the flexibility of thinking about given um, where AI is going and indexing into increases um, across different ways of, of thinking about measuring capabilities on different evals, um, that keeping the optionality there for the the um, the different use cases that are enabled every couple quarters um, would be my main advice on that. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks a lot for taking the time today and uh, really excited to see how you guys um, perform over the next couple of years. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.